Everybody, welcome to another video podisode of Between the Sheets. Here we are on United Broadcasting Network, otherwise known as Pound UBN Go. I'm learning all the social media stuff now. I mean, not that I didn't, but um, Tony and his crew are putting together um, tons of packets and information about social media. And on that note, you can follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and please follow the show Between the Sheets podcast. On Facebook, um, we have a wonderful show tonight. We have um, a go around the room, but uh, I'm a redhead now. Oh, shocking. Um, it's a little bold, but I think it, I'm okay. But uh, thank you for all your comments and everything on Facebook. Um, don't forget, you can also call in tonight. It's live, 323-524-2599. And without further ado, I will go around the room. We have, well, we don't have a room really, a Zoom room. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, we have Mara Shane. Hi, so Tell glad me. to be here. I know you do. Did you do something to your hair? It's really getting long, or those extensions. No, I cut it like a month ago, and it just grows fast. But your hair looks great, Gayanne. I love the red. It's very Jessica Rabbit. Is it? Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I just had the body of Jessica Rabbit. Then it'd be <laughs> hey, you're almost there. I mean, look at you. No. Yeah. Ah, don't worry about it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to remember. I'm supposed to just say thank you and not argue because you uh, you have to be able to receive. Is yeah. that correct, Cheryl? Who yes. is that? Cheryl good, Murphy. Good girl, good girl, <laughs> Gayanne. Yes, hi, everyone. Great to be here. Yeah. Why don't well, you just, uh, tell Lisa who you are? Because I, I always say the wrong thing. So tell her, tell her for what you do. Yeah, Lisa, I'm a medium and I connect with loved ones that have passed over. I'm also a psychic and I'm actually doing a demonstration online tomorrow night. So that's what I've been preparing for uh, all day today. And tomorrow is uh, going on live. Another medium and I are going to be doing uh, readings for like 50 people. So we're excited. That's fantastic. I know. I love it. I love it. And your business has completely grown through COVID. It has, it really, it really has. And well, you know, and so many people, you know, uh, in need and I was already on zoom to begin with, you know, I did a lot of zoom before. So for me, it was, it was an easy, uh, transition. So I'm hoping it is for you guys. Cause I know you, Gayanne, you're, you're used to working around a lot of people in an office, you know, or in, in production, go, go, go. So. I yeah. I've learned to, I've learned to, um, acclimate to zoom. Although like my, my, all my productions are up and running now. Oh, so I've, good. Been, I've been sort of not sneaking because you can't sneak anywhere because uh, you have to take COVID tests before you go anywhere. And I just got my probably, I think it's my 12th COVID test and I'm negative again. Um, so, so yeah, so I've been sort of trying to be a little bit more social when I can to go to set and sit in my office because this is, it's still weird for me working from home. I had this conversation with Kim the other day. Um, Cara Noble is back. Yay. Yeah, yes, I also uh, cut my extensions, but they didn't grow back. <laughs> These are extensions, by the way, if we're talking hair. Um, so, yeah, I love your hair. It's so blonde and beautiful. Thank you, Diane. It's the, uh, it's the swimming pool that does it. it the makes... swimming pool? Yeah, I think it just bleaches it all out. You're lucky you don't go green in the pool. I know, it's never happened to me. That is lucky, very, very yeah. lucky. Yeah. Sorry. Tell me that red hair is the hardest to upkeep and it bleaches out really quick or fades really quick. So that the first thing the hairstylist says, don't go in the pool. Uh -huh. I said, well, I don't because I don't swim, but we're okay with that. <laughs> uh -huh. In my pool. Yes, I do come. I do go into your pool. Yes, I do. So Cara, well, what projects have you been working on? Well, um, as you know, I finished my great big mosaic Taj Mahal, which sounds crazy. I know Lisa, but I'm, I did do four foot by six foot Taj Mahal. Um, and now I've, it's, I've just taken quite a few weeks just to organize my garage into a workroom. And I just pretty much finished that off yesterday with some help from other people, getting everything in the right place. And uh, so I've got to start smashing a few pots and start thinking about what I'm going to make next. Well, if you want a pot smashing party as opposed to a pot smoking party, <laughs> feel free, we'll be there. Uh -huh. angry friends, that'd be great. <laughs> Um, and lastly, but not least, um, 
one of my soul sisters. We haven't seen her for a while. She's been toiling away, um, banking, banking some bucks. <laughs> uh, all the way from Long Beach, because she's moved, is Kim Sanchez. So Kim, since we haven't seen you for like a month almost, why don't you fill us in on what's going on in your world? Well, it's just been really boring, you guys. I, I, um, oh. I work and I work. Right. No, I'm, I mean, I've been out and I've been enjoying, I've been hiking and it's been really great. Like Sundays, I've, I try to hike for five hours or four hours, something like that and get out. Um, I haven't started um, walking on the beach yet, but I ordered my roller skates. So I will be gliding down the boardwalk soon. Um, and as soon as I get the bot, I'll be in Venice, right? A little short cut off shores, a little white beater in Venice. That's <laughs> Did you get roller blades or roller skates? Skates, honey. I don't. I don't do that balance thing. Like, <laughs> you know. But no, my daughter's been here, and she's going to head off to Atlanta next weekend. So it's just been really nice hanging out and you know enjoying my life. And you're loving Long Beach. I am loving Long Beach. It's so close to work. And, you know, when I come up to L.A., I really, really enjoy it. And then I get out of it. <laughs> I don't know. I love L.A. Even though I'm looking for a place in Ventura, I I, I think I need my roots. I do need something still in L.A. Because I do love the chaos. I, I do. Maybe it's because I'm chaotic. Um, but then again, I'm I'm odd. Um, but without further ado, and then we have Tony. Tony's working the boards today. So hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Tony. Well, here now we have our guest. Um, I have never met her in person. Um, and uh, Jenny McNulty and her do a show on um, Facebook called Pandemic Password. And it's on every Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And because Jenny is one of the rotating co-hosts, I've watched the show and I've laughed. And out of the blue last week, or maybe two weeks ago, I don't remember, Jenny said, you want to be on the show? I said, sure. I, was, I have to tell you, I don't get nervous about anything. I was, ner I was really nervous, Lisa, being on that show because I didn't know, I mean, I didn't know what the questions were. I didn't know. It's like, I'm a control freak. It's like, tell me in advance. So I thought, oh my God, I'm going to make an ass out of myself. But oh God, there's all comedians and I'm not that funny. And, but I have to say, I had an amazing time. You and Lisa, you and Lisa, you and Jenny really made it comfortable and funny. And, um, and I so enjoyed it. So people, if you haven't seen Pandemic Password, um, it's on Facebook Mondays at 4 p.m. Pacific. And there is a virtual tip jar, which gets me to heylisa.com which is Lisa's website. Um, but I have never seen Lisa looking like this. Normally she has a nun outfit on. And, um, <laughs> you yeah, you so told me to show up out of drag, so I, I did. did. I did, I did. Um, but I'm sure you can whip on that habit thing anytime soon. Um, but um, I know her mostly as Sister Mary Agnes Labia. Is that correct? It's, a, a, it, I'll, I'll, uh, it's Labia, dear. L-A-B-I-A. <laughs> it is Latin. Uh, roughly translated, it means San Bernardino sailboat. Uh, for those of you not, and I teach a drama over at Our Lady of Perpetual Mood Swing near Seattle. Uh -huh. Virtually, of course. That's that's the nun. And it's fabulous, and and I mean I don't know. I was raised Catholic. Were you raised Catholic, Lisa? I was not. I just did a, a lot of uh, you know. I asked my my Catholic friends. And uh, learned all about the the um, it, it was a rough way to grow up. Apparently, it depends on the age. I mean, yeah. seriously, because I mean, I'm 56. But if you hear stories like my mother's 88, so if you hear stories from like her Catholic school days, it's like a horror movie. I swear to God. I mean, like those nuns were just like sadistic, repressed. Um, yeah, repressed, and the priests were, you know, doing other things to the little boys. A very odd religion. Um, but in any event, um, but you're also a singer-songwriter and that, and comedian and actor, and that's primarily what you're known for, you know, outside of the, the nun thing. Um, I'll read briefly, briefly, briefly a quick thing in her bio. It's like picture, I love, because I love this. Picture Tina Fey meets Bed Midler with Joan Jett guitar chops. And you've got Seattle's Lisa Coke. I was saying it Koch, so it's Coke. That's all right. Um, 
and, and actually Mara is the one who pointed that out to me. And then I had to ask you to make sure. So I didn't sound like an ass. Um, an irreverent singer comedian, out and sober chick, your deliciously twisted mix of comedy theater and tunes. You have five solo recordings or is there more after since the bio came out? No, no, that's correct. You have shared the sta stage with Steve Martin, Janice Ian, Lily Tomlin, Richie Havens, Kate Clinton, and more. Um, and we'll go on to talk about more stuff, but you absolutely are hysterically funny. And you, I'm glad that you brought your guitar. So, cause we want to hear you sing. Cause in this time, it's right before the freaking election. Hey, what song do you have to inspire these people who are on the border of voting blue to vote blue, Lisa? Well, I've been, uh, you know, I've been spending my time, uh, anybody who's a, a musician or actor or comedian is pretty much out of work uh, during Pandemicville. And so uh, I've been um, busking online virtually for tips. And um, I've decided to, I've been showing up about once once a month and writing um, uh, political material, writing uh, stuff that's current. And, you know, it, it, things change in a second. So I'm going to do my latest medley, which, of course, has changed in a second. But here we go. Went to a garden party, not a face mask there to see. Packed full of Republicans and their SCOTUS nominee. Mingling and hugging, breathing COVID air. Then they started dropping two by two. Trump is typhoid Mary, but it's all right now. They'll never learn their lesson, so you gotta vote early, vote them out. Yeah, you gotta vote for Joe. 45 said I can't breathe, so ironical. Spent three days at Walter Reed, just up on methadone. That's a steroid that I can't pronounce. <laughs> Balcony Covita, Mussolini taking off his mask. 36 infected so far, he's just a jackety ass. But it's all right now. They'll never learn their lesson, so you gotta vote early, vote them out. Yeah, you gotta vote for Joe. 45, super spreader. Look at the polls, now you're taking a header. 45, super spreader. And when you tweet, you should use spell checker. I beg your pardon. I got infected in the Rose Garden. Guess who was the vector? He's got an orange face and tax collectors. And why were they at the Rose Garden in the first place? To gloat about their ultra-conservative pick for the Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett, who, by the way, has Stepford eyes. Does she not? Yeah. She's nominated for RBGC. Obeys her husband, he's head of family. Belongs to a secret Catholic big brother cult called People of Praise that's scary as shit that she hid from senators when she was confirmed as a federal judge in 2017, along with the fact that she's radically anti-choice and anti-gay. That's why Amy is a handmaid. Oh, she is! And wait... Fly on Pence's head and Kamala given side eye. That VP debate he's interrupting with pink eye. In other words, Fly was cool. In other words, let's pray that's the last debate, please, God. But it's all right now they'll never learn their lesson so you gotta vote early vote them out yeah you gotta vote for joe everybody but it's all right now they'll never learn their lesson so you gotta vote early vote them out yeah you gotta vote for joe riding with biden 
Vote like your life depends on it because it really does, people. Let's boot out the steroid sociopath. You gotta vote for Joe. Thank you. Then you're going to sing a real song for us, too. Don't let oh. that guitar go walking. Too. Okay, all right. Well, do you get up every night in the middle of the night and jot things down when you think of them? And Well, yeah. I mean, uh, this stuff comes to me, but but there's so much material now. It's just, it's ridiculous. You know, yeah. with, I mean, Trump is just a chaos, chaos machine. So I would like it to be just a slightly less chaotic and have less to write about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly. It's not... Well, everybody, even though this isn't anything, whatever, but um, Lisa will be performing tonight. So there is a tip jar for Lisa to perform to us, and it's at heylisa.com. Um, I rarely do this, but she is an artist and she's out of work. So anyway, she's performing for us tonight for an hour and a half because we're going to call upon her because we just need music. Music yeah. is, yeah. for me, the best medicine, yeah. and it's yeah. the best, like, I don't want to think about what's going on. So anyone, Lisa's going to give us a little concert here and there tonight. It's Lisa Coke. Hey, Lisa.com. Please put some money in her tip jar if you're enjoying her. And by the way, even if it's not live, you can still go there as you hear it on the YouTube channel or any of my other, um, any of the other aggregators for the show. So Lisa, let's start. You're welcome. Um, I, I work in the arts, so it's really important. I mean, I'm lucky knock on wood. I have not had a job. I mean, I've had had a job this whole time. But for people who haven't, um, you know, it, there's no shame. You are you are doing what you're doing, and I think we need to appreciate it and say thank you. So, thank you. Um, okay, so let's start with little Lisa Coke. How did Lisa Little Coke? Little, little, little oh shit! You know, I can't even say that. Little. Uh, uh, how did she arrive into this planet? What is your background? Where'd you? How? Like, we'll start with there, and then we'll move forward, and then throw in a song whenever you want. Okay. Um, I grew up in a little town uh, in Ashland, Oregon, um, called Ashland. Uh, oh, Ashland, I love Ashland. Ashland. Southern Oregon. Um, yeah, really, really tiny little town with a Shakespearean uh, theater. And um, my brother and I started playing music uh, professionally when I was 15 and he was 17. We were, um, you know, just cute like the carpenters, I suppose. And, um, and so I started out as a musician and then uh, my brother was actually the funny guy. I had no idea I was funny until I s didn't work with my brother any longer. I started doing solo stuff. I started writing funny songs, and then I kind of wandered into sketch comedy. And, um, uh, yeah, it's weird. I still think of myself as a musician uh, before a comedian, but um, I get more more jobs as a comic. And so, um, like, as you – so, well, like – you went from Oregon to Seattle. Have you ever lived in LA or where did your work take you mostly? You know, I, I joined a, a, a variety of forgettable bands uh, in places across the country. Um, I lived in Pittsburgh for a while. I lived in Baltimore. I lived in Washington, DC. I lived in San Francisco. I lived in Portland. Oh. Um, I think that might be it. I've never lived in LA. Uh, yeah. And uh, I've been in in Seattle for about thirty three years. Now, are you are you in are you in a relationship? I am. I am married. My lovely wife Lynn is a real estate broker, and um, yeah, is it's it a long term thing. It is a long term. Thing. Well, for me anyway, it, for it could be for, in lesbian years, it's forever. It's uh, <laughs> we've been together seventeen years. So. Is Yay. Yeah, Woo right. And now, I mean. I just need to know this. When's your birthday? It's in February, February 4th. Wow, mine's the second. Oh, see, there's the Aquarian energy. There we are. And Amara's an artist as well, um, but not a performer. She's uh, She she draws and she paints. And... I'm a performer too. Oh, you are, but you're not a singer. No, no not a singer. I couldn't... Okay, you're not a singer. But I you know. did a web, a web series, which is very funny. It, it, the Katzenbergs, it's actually Laugh Out Loud, which is oh. actually, I came upon it on Facebook and that's what led me to Mar to meet Mara to have her join us as part of, to be part of the show because she just is hysterically funny and her mind is just amazing. Um, and Aquarians, Aquarians are practically perfect. So oh, yeah, well, I, don't, I, 
I can't really say that. Um, Not really, but yeah. But, you know, a little nutty, but you know, that's what makes you guys you. Um, so you, so then you started the musician thing. So how did you, like, what was your first break? How did you sort of transition from, oh, I can, I can do stand up, I can do sketch comedy? I'm still waiting for my first break. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you know, I just, I worked uh, in clubs for years as a musician. And um, I, I think I probably got, uh, I, I, I battled addictions um, and I got sober when I was 30. So everything kind of started uh, at, at the age of 30. And I recorded my first CD um, at that age. And I, that's, that's, I think, when things started rolling for me. Um, I also met my sketch comedy partner, um, Peggy Platt, who has, has passed. She passed a couple of years ago, sadly. And uh, we formed a, a sketch comedy duo called Dos Fallopia. And, um, and did quite well with Dos Fallopia. Lovely. So, um, like fallopian tube. Yes, cor that is correct. <laughs> Mara thinks there's a chakra in the anus. So please. Just <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm with you. So Lisa, are you related to the Koch brothers? I'm hoping. I, I am not. Uh, oh. thank thankfully. However, uh, sadly, my brother's actual name is David H. Koch. Oh, no, which no, he's no, not no. he's not real pleased about but yeah. yeah no we are not related to the the Koch brothers the evil Koch brothers i don't know who they are what are they known for um they're the the guys who uh finance uh, putting amy coney barrett on the yeah. the, uh, the supreme court they're the the right wing dudes that have played the long game for the last 50 years okay. and uh have are doing pretty well at installing um uh far right um judges Every, everywhere in our in our country and i think they they make brawny and those kind of things like those paper towels that cost us a fortune they and do they make all that stuff in the supermarkets i think that's where they got their money but i could be wrong about that yeah one of them died didn't didn't he one did Char die. charles died yeah i, oh, well, yeah, I think it was well, it was either david or charles i can't remember one of them just died yeah well did he um <laughs> yeah whatever they're a big they're a big big name in conservative politics because they're huge are, they huge they've, they financed it yeah, yeah they are so how did you um how did you do uh how did you get involved or how did you create sister mary agnes um sister mary agnes came out of a, a sketch that that peggy and i had done for one of our cabaret shows and i believe we did um two nuns in a sketch called the nun and the restless <laughs> um, it was a, yeah, it was a soap opera. And, uh, and then we decided we liked, uh, the, we had the costumes. So we, you know, once you've got the costumes, you might as well do more characters. So then, uh, Sister Mary Agnes Labia uh, came out of that, uh, uh, for, for the next iteration. And I did it solo and I, I just didn't enjoy the character because she's just not right. You know, and <laughs> lately Sister Mary Agnes has, has been more of a, a stand up. Um, you know, she'll... Or she'll, she just, you know, what, what do you call a nun on a stairmaster? A stepsister. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you call a nun with a wooden leg? Uh, Hop along chastity. <laughs> it's, that's the kind of stuff that she does. Or she'll tell, she'll tell stories, you know. Well, you know, at, at the, uh, the convent, Mother Superior uh, called us all together. She was very upset uh, because she said, I found a case of gonorrhea in the convent. And I said, oh, thank God, I'm sick of Chardonnay. <laughs> that kind of thing. We drinkers love that kind of joke. <laughs> it is. Funny. I mean, <laughs> it, you nailed it perfectly. I mean, it's just, I mean, to watch you with the whole garb and everything like that. Tony, um, can you find on Facebook a photo of Lisa as Sister Mary Agnes and post it so people know what the hell we're talking about. Um, so, so Lisa, you've been gay your whole life. Have you been like a card carrying lesbian your entire life? No, I came out when I was 19. Um, I, I wasn't, you know, I, I, I was a, a lesbian in all respects, uh, except I didn't know it. Um, you know, I played sports. I was on the basketball team. I was on the gymnastics team. I had girlfriends uh, who I'd spent all my time with. But I actually didn't come out until 19. Well, how did you not know? Like you just were pushing it aside or you just, it wasn't talked about or what? We, we didn't, there, there weren't any gay kids that, that I knew of in, uh, in 
my little tiny town. I'm sure there were, but everybody was closeted. And, uh, and you know, you, you just, if it's not on your radar, you just, you just figure you have to be who the rest of the kids are. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. But so 19 I, is still pretty young to come out though. That's great. Not well, yeah. I, I mean, I'm glad I did. I'm and glad I did. It was, it was, it was good. It's well, been it's good nice. since. I mean, 19 is, is, is young, but now I think because of the openness and um, just the visibility of the community, kids are coming out younger and younger. I mean, I was, I was 21 and I thought, oh God, you're so old. Um, but uh-huh. I mean, that well, was- I, I've had friends that, that have said, oh, I knew I was gay since I was four. How do you, I mean, they how knew do you, since they were kids, little kids. Know. I still don't understand. I can't remember anything. I didn't have a traumatic childhood. I didn't. I didn't. And thank God I was fortunate. I don't remember shit from my childhood. <laughs> Maybe it's selective memory, oh, you know? Really? Maybe. Memory from what? I mean, they were like, like, how about these people? Oh, you know, I remember being in the cradle or the crib. How the fuck? I mean, seriously? I don't remember shit. I think my, I mean, I remember stuff from pictures, but I don't remember like being there in pictures. I just know that I was there because of a picture. If there was no picture, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't remember shit. Kim, do you, do you have memories of your childhood that are vivid that you know where the hell you were at age one? No, I don't, I don't know where I was until I was 19 or 20. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Kim had a very fabulous career as a model. So, um, so we know that part but i also lived in ashland um on and off for years and i love it my cousins were there forever and my ex-husband and i moved up there from san francisco and um bought a farm out by emigrant lake nice yeah overlooked the emigrant lake the whole purpose was was to buy that was in order to build a big beautiful deck right and grow pot underneath of the deck Perfect. So perfect. That was that was our Ashland story. It's a sweet little town. It's lovely. Yeah. That's the hippie. That's the hippie town. Well, kind of. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's definitely liberal in in kind of a, a, a sea of of conservative um, Southern Oregon. Southern Oregon really got hit with the fires. Um, they had a, a fire start in Ashland and it went rapidly north and it just decimated two little towns that are in between Ashland and, and Medford, which is a, a, a larger town to the north. And it's it wiped out Phoenix and Talent. I mean, it literally yeah, my first girlfriend them. and I I met my first girlfriend in Ashland. We were working in Medford t- together and we lived in Talent and the place we lived in is no longer from that fire. You know? It's gone. Yeah. yeah. So no, sad. Like, could we get hit with anything else this year? Oh, right? Focus along the way, I hear. Um, so, Lisa, would yes, you be able to sing an original tune for us oh, now? I sure could. Do you want to hear something funny? I don't know. I'll leave it to the ladies. Yes, funny. I would, yes. yes. Funny? Okay. Uh, this is um, a song that uh, I, I did originally in uh, Dos Fallopia. Um, we had characters called the Spuds. A mother-daughter singing duo, country western, uh, you owe me and why not a spud. Not to be confused with that other mother-daughter singing duo. And this is a song, it's a love song. The night I met you, it was midnight. The drive-up window had light. I heard your voice come through the speaker. You said, can I take your order? How about some fries? I felt a tingling in my body as I drove up to the window like a shot. As you handed me that whopper, you touched my hand and smiled. And you said, careful now, it's hot. make my pants pound I must admit it's tingling in my pelvis and it's throbbing in my heart you make my pants pound what can I do and I'm losing 
losing all my fluids over you. Woo! It's kind of a subtle love song. <laughs> the blood is rushing to my special spots. Now you've got my panties in a wad. This sweating, drooling, panting, losing feeling is either chemical or I've seen God. I try to speak and sound just like Mel Tillis. This infatuation's driving me insane. Now my crotch is in a spasm. I really need an order of fries to help me ease the pain. To the left, oh, oh, down a little bit, down, yeah, oh, oh, get off, get off, climb off, oh, 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 yeah, 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 talk dirty, talk dirty, oh, boy, little left, little left, no, no, right, 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 down, up, but right there, ah, <laughs> you. So, <laughs> so I, you know, in the, in your bio, you've worked with some major, major, major names. Um, have I mean, how did you like? What was it? Was it comedy shows? I mean, were it singing? I mean, what what events were there that you shared the stage with those luminaries? Um, opening acts mostly uh, for for uh, major. Vo- Steve Steve Martin was many years ago. Very nice man. Um, very quiet man. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of them, uh, I, uh, a lot of folks have been through uh, music festivals, women's music festivals. I also work on Olivia Travel, Olivia Cruises. Okay. And uh, we've met a, a lot of um, great, uh, you know, entertainers on Olivia as well. So you like those. You worked with Dana Goldberg on Olivia? Yes. yes Dana's she's a good friend. Her. Yeah, I love her meet Danny McNulty on these um on these different events and town and all the the women's festival I think I met Jenny at um w- women's week in Provincetown I'm I'm pretty sure that's where I met Jen I have never been to P-Town I- I've never been never in my life I don't know why I'm an old lesbian how come I haven't been there ah, um it's a beautiful little town that's what I hear so how did you and Jenny come up with, or, or how did the pandemic password evolve? Because it's, it's fun. Guys, if really, truly, if you haven't seen it, it's pandemic password every Monday on Facebook um, at 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, I told Jenny, I want to be on it again because I had so much fun. So how did that sort of happen and, and come together? Well, at the, at the very beginning of, uh, you know, pandemic, uh, where everything was locked down, everybody lost their jobs all our gigs were canceled. And so um, uh, my friends and I just started, you know, in, interconnecting and saying, what are you doing? You know, what's, what can we do? How do we do this now? And uh, Jenny and I just had a conversation and I was like, we should do a game show. Um, you be the host and um, or maybe I'll be the co-host. And then I was like, oh, it'll be sister. Let's, let's have sister be the co-host and I'll run all the sound effects and, you know, we can just put it together. And we, we honestly thought we would just do it for a few weeks, um, a few weeks until, you know, lockdown was over. And we all thought that, baby. I know. My God. And here we are seven months later, you know. I can't believe it's almost the end of October. I know. I mean, it's, I, I don't know about, I mean, you're, I mean, I, most of us on here are social people and it's just been really hard like I have waves of, um, you know, I, I don't get depressed. I don't get lonely. I get bored. And 
when I get bored, there's a problem. Um, but it's, it, it's, you know, I go in these waves where it's like, oh God, this is so cool to work from home. And I can sit in a doctor's appointment and do that. And then there are times when I'm like, I am literally going stir crazy. I can't, I don't leave my, and I trust me, I do leave my house. Um, people don't give a shit. I do leave my house. I do do social distancing and I do masks out of people outside of my bubble. Okay. So don't give me shit for it. Cause I always get shit for this. Um, because I have an 88 year old mother and people are very opinionated about that. Um, but, but I'll tell everybody y'all who sit there and bitch and moan, I bet you haven't had as many COVID tests as I do. So I'm pretty locked down state. Uh, yeah, but, I was going to say that's, you've had a crazy amount of COVID tests. Oh, it's, oh and it's fine. And people are like, well, which one do you like better as if? Um, I'm like, I said, I, you know, I don't, I'd rather the nose one since I've been through all of them now. Um, I prefer the nose one. Um, when it's rammed up your nostril, it doesn't hurt. Everyone says it's hurt. It, it, does, not hurt. it does not hurt. What it is, it's this itchy, weird feeling and your eyes water and you're going to sneeze. Oh. That's, that's that. Right. Part two, right. the, the mouth swab, you swab 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and then down your throat. Yeah. I have a gag reflex, which is why I'm a lesbian. I would never make it uh -huh. uh -huh. to any guy because you have that little, I couldn't even get that little tiny swab back there without gagging. So for me, my COVID test of choice is the nasal swab. I've only had the one that goes up into your brain. Yeah. And it, it wasn't too bad. It's not that bad, literally. I mean, I think straight people, I, I, I guess I should do a thing now. People who say that the swab in the mouth is fine, I'm going to bet you 90% of them are straight because they're used to something bigger going down that far. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> but um, in any event, so, I mean, how have you been? I mean, because obviously you're out there, you're in the public, you, you are a performer. Um, how have you been coping um, with sort of the quietude of, not, of, of COVID? Um, well, I'm an introvert, and this is actually not a bad time to be an introvert. Um, you know, it's, um, I I'm okay uh, staying at home, writing, reading. Um, I do miss connecting with folks. So um, I I've been trying to um, uh, do a concert, you know, once a month. And, and also just to provide that, um, let's sing really loud, let's blow it out, let's laugh, let's get some endorphins going. Um, let's connect with people, uh, even if it's just online uh, through chat. You know you're in the same room together. You know you've got a, a shared energy, and it really does help. It's um, it, it's it's crucial right now because people are. I mean, it's you know, things are things can be looking pretty grim, and so in order to recharge, I think uh, that's that's what we need to do is find those things that that get your endorphins going like crazy. Um, you know laugh as much as you can. Um, and that will make you feel better. And, you know, sing at the top of your lungs in the shower or, uh, you know, find an online concert and sing at the top of your lungs, you will feel better. So that's what I'm trying to be in, I'm trying to perform that service. And it also helps me, I feel better. Now, Olivia, are, do they do online stuff? Because I know Andrea Meyerson, you know, does women on a roll stuff. Do, 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 I thought Olivia was doing these things as well. They are. They started the Olivia at Home series. And uh, it's been really great because they, they've, um, they've provided a, a place for entertainers to go, for musicians and comedians to go. Um, and uh, Olivia basically sponsors it. Uh, gives them a gives us a place to perform and then uh, uh, you know people are just working for tips um, so yeah and I think Olivia thought the same thing that they would just do it for a little while but it's still going I've never been on one of those sorry again is she the lady that came on the show like a year or so ago because I, and I didn't hear of her and she's in Hollywood and she has parties is that who we're talking about no oh, I don't okay. even know who the hell is Olivia I mean, who, I mean, like, seriously, like, I don't even, I've never been on a cruise. I don't like, obviously I don't swim, so I don't like boats. So how, do you, I mean, um, so who the hell is like Olivia Cruises? I mean, who owned it? Maybe there isn't a Olivia for real. Um, no. Olivia, they took the name from, from an old uh, uh, lesbian pulp novel. 
um, that's where that's where the name originated. Okay. Was from from a pulp, a, a lesbian pulp novel, and uh, actually Olivia started out as a record company in the seventies. Uh, there was a collective of women that got together that um, realized that uh, uh, if women wanted to hear women's music, uh, that they would have to distribute it, produce it themselves, and uh, perhaps become a, their own label as well. And so that's how Olivia started was as a record company. And in the 90s, uh, as record companies were, were kind of falling by the wayside, as independent, um, uh, independent music sort of overtook uh, major label music, um, they went into the travel business. They, they decided to do, do gay cruises, uh, lesbian cruises. And they, that's what they've done ever since. Since, 19, the, since 1990. Who are the they? Um, uh, the, the head of the company, the president of the company is a woman named Judy DeLugach and she's been, uh, she was part of the initial, um, uh, music collective, um, when it was a music company. And then she basically, uh, just took the company over. And so she is, she's the president and has been the president since 1990. Oh, nice. Yeah. So who inspires you? Ah, uh, boy, a lot of people. Um, you know, people I love, um, Lily Tomlin, um, Carol Burnett, um, you know, growing up, uh, musicians, Joni Mitchell, um, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young. Um, I mean, the musicians are the carpenters love the carpenters. I mean, everything that, that you, you are in grow up with that changes you somehow uh, that affects you either musically or, or interpersonally. But yeah, those are the, the kinds of things. Um, I, I had crushes on um, Stephanie Powers when she no was way. the girl from uncle. Heart you know. heart. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but she was on heart to heart too, right? Heart to heart. Yeah. But the girl from uncle before that, that shows you how old I am. Uh, but I should have known I was a lesbian a, a long time ago. <laughs> And what about your family, Lisa? Like, are other members of your family as funny as you are? I mean, your your sense of humor is just so delightful. I have one brother, and he's also in the, in the arts. He's an actor, uh, producer, musician, very funny guy. Um, it, my my father and mother were uh, elementary school teachers. My dad taught sixth grade. My mom taught first grade. My dad was a very funny guy. Uh, you know, he, he told the, the bad dad jokes like, um, um, he's a good egg as eggs run. If you like runny eggs, you know, that's, it's a, a dad thing, but, uh, yeah, he was very funny, loved to laugh and loved to, to sing. He was a musician as well. Um, uh, musician in his high school days, high school and college days. So, yeah. It's just so natural for you. I'm telling you, it's just Lovely. I'm so happy I'm here and I'm laughing. I mean, we, like you said, we all need to laugh. Gosh, don't we, though? This is amazing. Thank you. I want to hear about your other girl crushes. Stephanie Powers, okay? Stephanie <laughs> Powers, yeah. Um, Julie Andrews as a, you know, sound of music. Um, yeah, Mary Poppins. I should have known when I was about six. Uh, you know what? I'll do a song for you that, that I wrote. This is about... Um, about falling in love with women on the screen. Okay, cool. <sighs> Never know how much I want you. Never know how much I care. When I turn that TV on ya, I get a fever that's so hard to bear. I'm watching Beaver <laughs> on the TV. Channel 22 Delight Beaver Cleaver In the morning Beaver all through the night Beaver Cleaver Fever Some of you dig Brother Wally Some get off on good old Ward Well I get hot when I see Mama June Posing by her eyes Board. Oh, Mrs. Cleaver, so good-natured, perfect mother, what a wife. 
Beaver, cleaver in the morning, beaver on Nick at night, beaver cleaver, fever. Oh, I wish that I was shipwrecked on that uncharted desert isle. Mary Ann would make me breakfast. And in the evening, Ginger making me smile. Thank you, God. Yes. Watching TV, Channel 22, delight. Beaver, cleaver, in the morning. Beaver all through the night. Beaver, cleaver, fever. Talk about your warrior princess. Zena dressed in battle gear. She and Gabrielle are friendly. But 20 bucks says that they both are queer. Duh. Watching TV. Channel 2222 Delight. Beaver. Beaver. In the morning. Beaver all through the night. Beaver Cleaver Fever. Kirk, he flirts with danger. Spock's a Vulcan alien. But my lieutenant is a hora. She puts a charge in my dilithium. I don't know what that is. I don't care. Watching TV, Channel 22, Delight. Beaver, cleaver, in the morning. Beaver all through the night. Beaver, cleaver, fever. Sing along, won't you? Beaver Cleaver Fever Beaver Cleaver Fever Beaver Cleaver Fever What else would you be when you grow up? Um, I always wanted to be a singer. That's that's the only thing I was ever really interested in being. I just told my mom I want to be a singer. And I didn't, I, I took piano lessons, but it didn't come quickly enough, you know, to a company. I wasn't a good enough piano player. But my brother talked my parents into getting me a guitar when I was 13. And that is pretty immediate. You can learn four chords and you can play, you know, 200 songs. Yeah, but it hurt. Um, and not bad. I was, I wanted to sing so badly. It was worth the, the bleeding fingertips. So I did, I did the piano, organ, keyboard routine and that was okay. And then I wanted guitar and my parents bought me a guitar and I just, I, I did, I, I got so frustrated because I wanted to start playing rock and roll, you know, like I just wanted to start like shredding, you know what I mean? And I was so frustrated because, well, I didn't practice either, but I, I you know, I, I was like, my, my hands, my little, poor little fingers were hurting and I got so upset. And this is when I had a temper as a child. Um, I got so upset because it wasn't moving fast enough for me that uh -huh. I the guitar and I got so pissed off and I just slammed it on the floor. Oh, that's well, that's, that's actually a pretty rock and roll move. <laughs> I, that was and forward. I didn't have the attitude and the personality. I just didn't have the talent. Um, but, um, but I, and then I remember breaking the, the thing and my, I said, and my parents were like, I said, I would like another one, you know, <laughs> and they said, no, I was very upset. But then later on, you know, later on, I actually worked for record labels. I actually um, managed the Berlin, Berlin and the motels in my later years. And it was sort of fun because like they used to come, my, apparently my house is really acoustically great. So they used to come and rehearse in my house. That's and, awesome. And, then, and now I have, I have eight, eight, eight guitars, one bass, two electric guitars, a piano, and nothing, and I do not know how to play. Although sometimes every once in a while, if I, maybe if I'm like, I don't know, like depressed, usually when I'm depressed or sad, I'll pull one of the guitars and in my head, I'm like singing away. It makes, it, it sounds horrible. It doesn't give a shit. But I am just rock and roll queen, man. So I, I, I admire anybody who plays the guitar. The guitar is my thing. Guitar's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to it's easy to uh, cart around and 
think so. Because, like when I tried to pick up a guitar because my mom played guitar in high and when I was in high school, I lasted about ten minutes with those awkward trying to get the and the strings and the calluses. That was it for me. I'm like, I'm not a musician. <laughs> It, it actually is, you know, if you learn, if you learn four or five chords, that's what I always tell people if they're interested, um, you know, just, just uh, learn four or five chords and you're pretty good to go for a lot of different songs. Yeah. Now what happens with age is no patience for me. Yeah. 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 I had no patience and now I have less patience. I, it just doesn't work. I'd rather, uh, that's, but you know what? I support the arts. So, you know, I would rather pay to be someone who knows what the hell they're doing and perform and, and, and support them than to be in my house. Although it is a great movie, right? Kim, are you musical? Cara, are you? I mean, I know Cara sings. Kim, nothing. You're nothing. Never tried it. I got nothing. I played clarinet when I was like uh, in grade school. And uh, yeah, oh. it, mm, no. 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 Okay. Cheryl, are you musically inclined at all? Tiny. I mean, I sang, you know, I sang in college a little bit. My family, everyone plays an instrument in the family. So, but yeah, we, we come from a musical family, I'd have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, this, did, did your musical family sing uh, like at, at Christmas or at the holidays? Did you all, all get together and sing? Actually, we didn't. We, oh. uh, I was the only singer, really, but uh, my brother's a guitarist and my sister's piano. No, we didn't really do that. We kind of just went our own way. We did oh. it you know, on our own time. My brother's actually professional now, um, playing gigs, and he's a flamenco guitarist now. But uh, wow. yeah, but we love, we love music. We grew up with music, right? I think, Lisa, as you know, it's in your family. It's like, it's just, you know, it's just part of you. you yeah. It's been really interesting. My, my mom is uh, uh, battling Alzheimer's now. And one of the ways that um, uh, I can connect with her is to sing. And um, so I get together with her on, on video um, several times a week and just sing songs uh, that she, from her youth, from her, uh, that her father might have taught her. Uh, her dad was a musician. And then things that she might have heard David and I sing through the years. And she remembers all those lyrics. That's awesome. Yeah. They do have that. Um, a friend of mine who's a singer, she actually goes, to, well, she used to um, go to a lot of the um, facilities yeah. uh, for either people with dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, and she used to perform. And then Beanie does so too, Car, Another friend of ours, Beanie, she used to probably the COVID. And she used to sing all the old songs and, and they perk up. And they remember. I've been there doing. I've done it with her, especially at Christmas with Beanie in the old people's home, and it is amazing because they can. That some people don't speak a word. Suddenly, a song comes, and they you see their faces change, and they can sing along. It's amazing. It's amazing. I, Happy birthday, I, even yeah, to yeah. my friend's mother, and she loved it. You know, yeah. Just so simple. Just shows you what music can do to us. Well, they they say that uh, with music, you use both sides of your brain. Oh. And it accesses both sides of your brain. And, and I, you know, I think that music is, is that um, it's an emotional connection. Um, it's so, it's deep. It's in there deep. And the memories are deep. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it really is pretty crazy. I just start playing, you know, five foot two or, you know. When whippoorwills call and evening is nigh. my mom is like <laughs> or they're a little yeah singing along I mean, the world, I mean don't you think the world sorry for the world is so much better if we had more music and more animals there you go That's absolutely it. and animals yeah yes I Bad car, sorry I interrupted car what were you going to say I was just I mean you may not know the answer to it but the fact that you're saying it uses both sides of the brain is that what makes people become alive when they they've lost their mind perhaps uh you know i think generally uh, um things are run by one one side or the other of your brain um i, I don't 
I don't know any more than I've than I've heard, but but that music encompasses both sides. So it's got a you know I, I would imagine if you've you've lost a little bit on one side, you've still still got some on the other side. Or but I know that it's you know if you hear a song that that came from your youth, from your high school days, it's in there. It's it's in there viscerally, you know. It's it's kind of in your bones, and so I don't know. The least I know. The lyrics one can remember as well from a, from your childhood. You can remember from fifty years ago. Yeah, old memories. Yeah, her her um her short term memory is just almost completely gone, but the long term memory, you know, she'll she'll pop out with something, and I'll just go, oh oh, you remember that? That's cool. So she doesn't live in Seattle, in that in your area. She lives down in Southern Oregon. Um, after my dad passed a. Uh, about 11 years ago, she found uh, love again. And so she and her partner have been in an assisted living complex um, in Medford for the last two years. And uh, so chances of that, I know. Well, and he's, he's 94 and my mom's 90. Oh, Oh, that's so cute. And they love to dance. I mean, the, uh, you know, the pandemic really just kind of shot, um, all of our seniors routines, whatever they had going on. And uh, I guess it's, it's not uncommon um, to have what's happened to my mom. She, she took a a pretty, um, pretty quick dive. And um, a lot of seniors have done the same thing from lockdown, just having, they can't see their families, they can't see their friends, they can't go out and do what they used to do. So I never thought about that before. Um, that's an element that it, it's new to me. I think that's so tragic. I yeah. Really, um, yeah, that's really sad. I don't like hearing that. Yeah, it's been it's been really tough for the um, um, the facilities to try and um, keep the the residents interested and connected, um, and they uh, the, the the people that run. Uh, my mom's facility are really good. And they said that after the initial lockdown, when they started, um, you know, letting people go back to the dining room and things like that, they said people would just stay in their rooms. They got used to being in their rooms and they had to kind of force them back out and, you know, just to even get exercise and, and to connect with the, with the other residents. So. I think most that affected are the elderly, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I think kids too, because, and, and kids, I think Kim and I, I think Kim and I had this conversation at one point where, you know, you have kids in an abusive situation with their family and schools and activities were always sort of their hope. And now they're, and, you know, and it's really, it's really sad. Cause I mean, I know, you know, obviously it's easy for us cause we're all a little self-centered and we're all you know, this is how it's affecting my life, you know, and, right. and, you know, when you look at, you know, hey, even in COVID, our lives are pretty fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. And then there are people that are disadvantaged or in situations that are not healthy, and they are a, a, imprisoned in that. And it is just so dis. It's, it's scary. It, it's scary. It's scary. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, and it's, um, and, and this COVID thing better stop soon. I mean, you know, and, and, and I don't understand, I don't understand why. Yeah. Uh, gross mismanagement would be my first uh, guess. Yeah. I mean, the Uh, way the president, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. uh, Just the way the president has handled this, this, his stay and, and the Rose Garden event and, and then just his callousness, the um, the way he speaks of it, uh, he's out of his mother loving mind, you know. He's, he's, you he's on steroids. Yeah, he, he is. is. On oh, that was so funny. I was watching CNN, and they were all trying to figure out. Well, was Trump? You know, is it the steroids, or was he always kind of like this? That was so funny. They're trying to go back in time, and and one of the reporters is like. But he's always sort of said things like he's always that. Always been an asshole. He has always yeah. been an asshole. Yeah. Um, don't get to where you are unless you are an asshole. Yeah. Um, and you know, and it's amazing how he like successfully recovered so quickly um, from COVID. I know. Hmm. Funny that, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. 
Well, there's no, absolutely no empathy. You no. know, no, there's None. no empathy. I mean, so it's like saying he's a sociopath. Yeah. He is. Like, doesn't he have somebody, I would think that he would have someone, well, he probably does, saying, um, if you say this, it's going to make you look this way, but he probably doesn't care, so. He doesn't like, listen to anybody. He doesn't listen, he just does what he does. Exactly. And because he is, he has that God complex. I mean, him and Hitler and Mussolini, they're all sure, are really separated at the hip. Um, I mean, he wants a dictatorship, is what he is, because he's an asswipe. Um, and, and how people still want to vote for him, I... I you know, I don't, I, 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 I'm like verklempt for words. It's <laughs> so unbelievable that he has people that are still drinking his Kool-Aid. And what's really crazy is a lot of people below the poverty level, below, forget about middle class, below the poverty level are like Trumpists, which I don't understand because what is he doing for them? I mean, nothing. So I, oh God. I don't really want to talk about politics, um, but I, I have just say part. though that his. Did you see what he's using for one of his campaign songs? Which one? Macho, macho man. Ugh. <laughs> oh, revolting. I'm just kidding. And like everybody that he's using, that they're they're having objections, and they're like, "Can you not use my song, please?" It's the. It would be the village people who yeah. are. Does he not realize it's it it's sung by a raft of gay men? No, I don't think. He, I don't know that one, and it was he's using Celine Dion's "My Heart Will Go On." Oh dear oh. God! And then he's using um, Creedence Clearwater. There is a guy. What's the guy's name? John Fogarty. John or, Fogarty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they actually CNN actually had. He, they're using the song "Fortunate Son." Oh. Using that, and they actually had John Fogarty on camera saying. I wrote that back with with the draft at Vietnam and how the fortunate man, the lucky with the spoon in his mouth, rich guy doesn't have to go off to draft. I don't know if Trump understands that, you know, when he's playing that. So, well, let me tell you something about that. Um, John Fogarty's full of shit because unless John Fogarty gave him permission to use it, because he's getting paid every time he uses it. I don't know. I'm I don't know the way it works in the business. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are th- they claim on on that news article are objecting to him using his song. Well, they're getting paid for it, so there we go. Are they? Um, someone, yeah, everything you have it's a it's music licensing. Um, but I just want to bring up another thing because here's another fallacy about COVID. I have people I had people telling me, you, you know, once you get COVID, you only get it once and you're immune. And, you know, now that we're kind of in a second wave, because numbers are starting to increase again, people are getting COVID again. There's a friend of, well, Kim and I, Kim, Mara, and I know someone who just posted on Facebook yesterday that he um, has COVID in March. He had it in March, and now he has it again. And, um, And, you know, everyone's like, I don't understand it, COVID. What people aren't understanding about this disease is it mutates so quickly. We are behind this disease. And if it continues to mutate, we'll never get ahead of it. So yes, people, you will continue to get this disease. So, you know, you do have to wear your mask. And and look, when I go into, like, if I'm with my bubble of friends, you know, I don't. But I'm also COVID a hundred times. A, I mean, I'm also tested a hundred times a week. Um, but you know, you still have to, to some degree, do keep that. Especially when you go to stores or in strange public places, you know, do it. You know, just do it for you. Protect yourself. And I'm not a big. You know, I've never been a big mask thing. Although now I'm actually a friend of mine um, makes masks now. So I'm actually okay. Cause we have masks. I have a whole shitload of masks now. It's become a fashion statement, but no, don't say that. <laughs> well, for they now, they for said now. that I, I think it's if 80% of the population wore masks, we could knock out, uh, the virus in four to eight weeks. That's what the scientists are telling us. I mean, literally if everybody just did what they were supposed to do, and, you know, with the distancing and wearing masks, we could knock it out. Yeah, I think because we are not, not everybody's like sort of being diligent with this. That's why it continues to spread. And that is why we're behind the eight ball. 
Um, all right, enough about COVID. I'm done. Um, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have. I have. I have a song about the. Oh, okay. It's time for a song. Okay, good. Thanks, Lisa. Mask on me that protects you. Mask on you that protects me. <laughs> when you cough, your droplets fly farther when you cough or sneeze. So don't be a selfish dick. Thinking only of yourself. Costco, they will boot you out. All because you didn't wear a mask. Sing! Mask on me, it protects you. Mask on you, that protects me. When you talk, your droplets fly farther when you cough or sneeze. So don't be a selfish dick. And stop whining about your freedoms. Costco, they will boot you out all because you didn't. Just wear a mask for you and me. Face mask. Simple. Very cute. Very cute. So it's a symbol of not speaking. It's ta- it, to me, it symbolizes my freedom being taken from me. And right now in this country, our freedoms are being taken from us. So but I, but it's a it's a virus, dear. It I mean it's it's a different it's a different animal. Virus doesn't care about our freedoms. Virus doesn't care. So I don't want to be in a room with somebody that is not masked up because you don't know if you're infected. In the room? It, 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 I don't want to be inside. I don't want to be inside with people that aren't wearing masks because I don't want to be outside either with that. Yeah, yeah. Outside is a little safer. But I, I wear a mask every place I go. Every place. But didn't the, I don't know if anyone else heard this. I only know this because I'm in sanitization and we keep tabs on it. The World Health Organization just came out and said that um, they don't really believe that this distance thing has been the right thing to do. Right? Huh. Well, that that doesn't doesn't make any sense. Uh, well, for instance, I'm a singer. They we know that it's airborne. Everybody that that's a fact. It's airborne. Um, I can't I can't uh, sing in a room with folks unless I'm masked up because um, uh, early, early on uh, they had a, a chorus that met in Washington State and it was uh, it was way early in COVID and they did all the the distancing stuff. Um, they, they washed their hands, they had hand sanitizer, but they were singing. So they were pushing out, uh, the droplets farther than six feet. And, and, uh, it's, if you shout, if you sing, if you're really pushing it out, uh, that direction. And it was like 45 out of 60 people got infected gotcha. from, from that chorus. And it was like, Oh, huh, okay. That's very infectious. What Cara? Did you sing in a mask, Lisa? You actually sing in a perform in a mask, or how? Well, not- um, I I've sung in a mask around my mother. Um, wow. You know, if, if we're if we're close to anybody, or I've sung in a mask um, with other musician friends. We don't get together too often. Or if I'm getting together with my brother and uh, and his daughter who also sings, uh, I just I I'm like, you guys, we got to mask up, and then we wow. we create space, but then we're able to sing with each other. So not breathe just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I know it's, you know, it's, it's not pleasant, but it's not hard. It's not hard to wear a mask. I don't think anyway. All right. So there we go. Uh, hey, Lisa, if you had to sing, what's like, what song is your favorite song that you enjoy singing? Um, and would you sing it for us? There's so many. Um, do you want to hear something, uh, something what's your favorite cover to sing ah that's really tough um uh how about this i should have known better with a girl like you that i would love everything that you do
not done yet we have 15 more minutes but what? i just want to yes i told you it goes fast um this is between the sheets podcast we're here the first and third friday of every month on the united broadcasting network pound ubn go um here we are 7 p.m pacific our guest today and we only have 15 more minutes with her is singer songwriter comedian sketch artist blah 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 a woman ah. Many, 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 many talents. Lisa Koch, otherwise known as Sister Mary Agnes Libya. Is that my right? Very well. That's good. That was perfect. Just checking. Um, And her website is um, heylisa.com. You know, she's been performing songs and stuff for us tonight. And uh, please tip, 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 T-I-P, not tit, tip, P-I-P. So, Lisa, what do you think... um, Let's talk just two more seconds, two more seconds, two more seconds, just political. And I don't want to go long. The whole like Supreme Court bullshit um, and um, the Roe versus Wade. I thought it was really interesting. And we're all women here. And, and I mean, Mara still is of childbearing years. Um, I don't know. No, about- I'm not. Well, I doubt that. But- well, more than me. So you're pretty young. Um, but, you know, it's like I was talking to some people and some people that are not um blue people and they were like what do you give a shit about roe versus wade i mean you're not going to get pregnant you're not who gives a shit blah 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 and i thought you know that is so trump and so fucking ignorant because they're missing the damn point that's like right that's just like one thing the bigger picture is um in essence no one can tell me what the fuck to do with my body you know the example could be yes abortion but there's so many more things that can actually be taken away. So what, um, so, I mean, what do you think? I mean, seriously, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think well, he's going to push this bitch through? Yeah. It doesn't look like the, the Democrats can stop him. I mean, it, it's, done. it's basically a done deal. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's a done deal. They, they've, uh, they went through with all the, uh, the, the questioning uh, of Amy Coney Barrett, and, and she did pretty well at, uh, evading. Um, mm-hmm. And she seems pleasant enough. I mean, I can't believe she brought her entire family and made her kids sit through 
that many hours. I can't believe they did that. They were just used as props, those poor kids. They're not nothing else to do. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> anyway, but it's not just it's not just women's issues. I mean, it's not just Roe v. Wade. Um, we've got two conservative uh, judges on the court talking about um, rolling back, um, you know, marriage equality. And um, I don't know about you, but that affects me personally. Me so um, I don't I don't think they can very successfully go backwards once you've uh, given people freedoms. Um, I mean, I know that they're, if, if they chip away at them, like, you know, voting rights have gotten chipped away, but people know what they're missing. Um, if, if Roe v. Wade is, is uh, struck down, people will know what they're missing. And women, women will be, I mean, it, it, I think people are, are, are going to have a real hard time with that. And I don't know if that means that the Supreme Court is not going to be recognized as a valid body anymore. Um, it, 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 I mean, it remains to be seen, but we're in, we're in brand new territory. Yeah. Um, you know, but the fact that they've rammed through all these uh, really super conservative judges on the federal level, um, they've rammed through like 300 conservative yeah. judges. So they're, they're really trying to change it from the inside out. And being somewhat successful, but if if there's a three to six majority on the Supreme Court, I, I honestly I, I don't know. I just think it's it's going to be a lot of trouble. I do too. Now the whole marriage equality thing, um, and maybe I'm wrong or maybe I'm right because it doesn't affect me yet. I mean, or maybe never at all. But if you're married legally, and let's say that goes away, does that mean that if you're married prior to them changing the law, it stays the same or it automatically then you don't, it's like you're not married anymore and you don't get those rights. You would revert back to, to your own state, whatever the rules were in your own state. And um, um, uh, Lynn and I were domestic partners in the um, state of Washington before the state of Washington got um legal legal marriage and we waited to get married um after it had been a, a u.s federal uh right um so yeah i don't know how that would work honestly but um you know married couples under uh, legal marriage uh, gay couples get all of the the same benefits that that any other couple gets and um, and we didn't before. We we just got a handful of you know protections, but there were a lot of protections that were not offered. So, you uh, know, I heard that um, the main difference with with Judge Amy Barrett, Tony, whatever Tony Barrett, Tony um, Barrett, is that she she believes in using the Constitution uh, the way it was when the founding fathers drafted it. And I know that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was not like that. And that's what brought us forward. So to think that somebody is going to interpret, you know, to, they're not going to give any leeway. It's almost like it's like taking the Bible, too, and swearing by the Bible. And um, I just think that's really sad. And I, I'm worried that she's going to um, undo uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's progress. She will. We we are we all are. Uh, I, I I oh god. We need more flies. We need a swarm of flies. Um. Swarm flies. <laughs> Here I got another song. It, it this is a, this is the same topic. It's real short. Sometimes it's hard to be a woman, especially right now. It's just a crime. There's a war on women. It's looking grim and. Sending us right back to medieval times. The GOP, they're on a mission. Boy, howdy. Cause men know what's best for all us gals. Apparently, they're rolling back the 60s. Pulling out all their tricksies. I can't believe I still have to protest this shit. Really? been doing this for how many years hands off my clam my uterus and 
vulva. Yes, we need birth controller, cause you won't grab your pickle. Hands off my clam, my cervix and the JJ. Your moral crap is just a sham. show by the way kim just texted me she disappeared her phone died so (laughs) so she said to say goodbye for her august she said shit my phone died that was the text um but what a perfect song to end um this time we've got guys you know let's face it let's vote blue i mean it's not only the lgbt plus community it's people of color there you know it's it's transgender it's women women it's any any i don't want to say disenfranchised but anyone that doesn't fit in the norm no matter what that is our 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 lives are being decided by socio psychopathic narcissists by old white men old white men exactly and you know this this bitch that they're going to put in the supreme court um I said, I, we, we don't have anything to do with that, but, you know, make it, make your vote count this year because it truly does. Um, and I, I will say this again, you know, Bernie people, please stand behind Biden. I mean, we need those votes. People who don't think your votes matter. It does, especially now. Can you imagine what this world would be with Trump as president? Again, God forbid, Pence as vice president and a completely conservative majority in the Supreme Court. Um, We can kiss our fucking rights goodbye. I think that's why why so many people are are voting in droves now, and and even in states that are making it uh, hard to vote. I mean, they're doing doing straight-up voter suppression in Georgia, and people are just taking their chairs and taking snacks and standing in line for 11 hours. It's unbelievable, and it's awesome. Yes. So people, please, um, you know, if you're debating, if you can't, if you can't get your mail-in ballot, you know, we're all here. We're all here to help each other, Um, you know, help your neighbor, help your friend, help whoever. Get those votes out. Make your voice heard. Um, You know, I want to still be doing this show um, without anybody telling me I can't say or do what I want. And um, freedom of speech is really important. And when you start to suppress a lot of things, freedom of speech is the next thing up. And because um, they don't want us to talk, they want us to, to mm. get us. So um, let's not, you know, let's not live in the handmaid's tale. This is the United no. States of America. And, you know, just because people who are Trumpists think that they are the best or they are the most patriotic, they're not. We all are patriotic, but vote fucking blue. Please. Um, there you go. I'm not trying to sway you, but yeah, I am. Ah, vote blue. Because vote blue. You know, what's the worst thing that can happen if you don't like Biden and you don't like Kamala? I mean, it's got to be better than what we have now. Somebody said, uh, uh, or I read somewhere, that even if you don't like, uh, you're, you're not, you know, perhaps some of the younger voters are like, I don't want to vote for this old guy. Um, it's, it, your vote doesn't have to be a love letter. It's more like a, it's a chess move. Yep. You're playing chess. It's a chess move to get you to the, the person that you want the next time around. So it's a, it's a long game. Exactly. Um, I agree with you. That's a really good way of, play, of putting it. So everyone, please, this is probably the most crucial election that we've had in an extremely long time. Um, and don't, don't throw your vote away. And, um, <clears throat> and don't, you know, and this, at this point, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't give a shit if you vote for Trump. Um, just defriend me, please. Um, or don't or don't vomit on my wall. You know, don't vomit on my wall because we could agree to disagree. Um, but, you know, this is really important. So please, please, please do go out and vote. Um, and uh, again, it's, um, you know, I, I want to smile on November 4th. You know, I want to smile. Well, we're not even going to know that soon. <clears throat> well, we'll know. I don't, I don't know if we know for sure because... But I think well, as we see things coming in, I think we can see where things are being played. Uh, so 
I think Kim's on, but I don't know where she is now. Now we see Kim S. So I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. But, uh, but I just wanted to... What? You are a feisty redhead. I love it. You now I am. I used to have dark hair. Um, I mean, I still have dark hair. I don't ask. I, I went red. It, it's I love it. Do you love being a redhead? Um, oh, there's Kim. Oh, Kim. Kim, you're there. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> I'm on my phone now. I'm on my phone now, though. It's not quite the same experience. <laughs> but yeah, I love being a redhead. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's it's it'll last for a while. I think for my birthday I'll go all purple. We'll see. I mean, where the fuck am I going? Really? Um, but I just want to say thank you, Lisa. Um, you uh-huh. are you are so fun, so talented. I I just I love I love what you do. I love what you have to say because you agree with us. Um, <laughs> um, I love your parodies of your songs. I I hope. You know, obviously, you know, when, when this is all over and, and you're performing, I would love to come see you and, and whatever and see and support you. I would love to see all of you in person someday. Yeah. And we will. I, I don't think it's going to be that morose. We will. Um, but um, uh, but thank you. So, Lisa, where can people find you? <clears throat> uh, they can find me at heylisa.com. Just like, hey, Lisa, H-E-Y-L-I-S-A. And how about Instagram and Facebook? Uh, if they go to Hey Lisa, they can find me everywhere. Okay, wonderful. And are you working on any projects like while you're while you're here that you want to just tell us a little bit about what we should? Um, I'm trying to think what's uh, uh, I've got a I've got an Olivia at Home concert on um, on the 29th. Uh, that would be like a Thursday, October 29th, right before the election. So I'm going to have some new material. I'll have some uh, some new parodies written by then, I'm sure. And uh, yeah. And just um, uh, uh, some songs to sing along with, and and um, you know, let let us know that we're not alone, and and that uh, you know, keep your tribe together, find yeah. your tribe, and 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 hang hang with. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, you bet. Um, uh, Mara. Sign off, babe. However you want to. Okay. Sing. So uh, thank you, Lisa, for being on the show. I loved having you here. Um, I can be found on Marshane Design, custom, no, Marshane Custom Designs on Facebook, um, Marshane Art on Instagram, and MarshaneArt.com. Um, and I'm an artist and I, I do custom pieces for people. So yeah, it'd be great if you checked out my work. That'd be awesome. Thanks. Excellent. And Cheryl? Uh, well, Lisa, it was such a joy. Thank you so much for the humor and making me laugh. It was just phenomenal. I can't wait to meet you in person. And I will definitely am starting to follow you on Facebook and website and all of that. Back at you, Cheryl. It's yeah. so nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, uh, you can reach me, guys, at mediumcheryl.com. And I'd love to see you tomorrow night. And I'm doing a dem tomorrow night. It's on Zoom. So check out my events page. Cool. cool. Thanks, Cheryl. Cara? Yeah, I'm of course on Facebook, Cara Noble, and um, I also have my voiceover website, caranoblevoice.com. Thank you. Kim? Well, I'm just on Facebook these days, maybe a little Instagram, but most of the time I'm, I'm really not on social media at all. Hardly <laughs> ever. <laughs> it, it will, I think you'll live longer. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But listen, you know what I am up for? I'm up for like a socially distant dinner. So let's do that. Okay. Good. You're cooking. Yes. Let's do it. We can go to Cara's. You know, that's easy. Yeah, for sure. An oasis. Cara's home is like an oasis in the valley. It's amazing. Um, so everyone out there, thank you, Tony, for running the boards. I appreciate that. If it's still Tony, maybe we had a switch somewhere in between. Um, but Everyone, I want to thank you again. This is Between the Sheets podcast. Um, We're on the first and third Friday of every month at 7 7 p.m. Pacific here on the United Broadcasting Network. You can follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and of course, the Facebook page, Between the Sheets podcast. Um, All these shows, all the past shows are on YouTube. If you want to see the visual, it's Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. And we're on all the um, social media 
aggregators or podcasts. Spotify, we're now on Amazon, um, on the Amazon podcasts. We're on Google Play. I want to say thank you always for following us, for listening and making the numbers just grow and grow and grow. I appreciate it. Um, I love my guests. Thank you, Lisa. Again, just so wonderful to, to have you in the studio, fake studio, the Zoom studio, whatever they want to call it. Um, it's, Thanks, a lot, it's a lot different when you're in the studio. Uh, I miss it. Um, like a I do too. Yeah. So, um, but I just want to thank everyone out there. Um, I can tell you that, have you heard of a singer named Tiffany? I think we're alone now. Yes. I, I think she'll be coming on the show. <gasps> Um, if you've heard of Aisha Tyler um, from Criminal Minds, uh, she will oh. be on the show. Uh, Cindy Lauper has reconfirmed she is still interested in being on the show. So, you know, we have I have a lot of um, people wanting to come. It's just fitting it within their schedules because production is back up and running. So um, please tune in. And I unfortunately am a social media, well, this is social media way too much, um, but um, but that'll make me live longer um, because I need, I need, I, I need, I need people. I need something. I need attention for Christ's fucking sake, especially now with my red hair. Um, high maintenance diva, they've told me. Um, but in any event, and I'm not really, I mean, I can be, I, there's always a high maintenance diva in every single one of us. And that's okay. Don't ever, ever, ever be ashamed of that. Um, Cause you have your power and you learn to love yourself. So if someone's making you feel bad because you love yourself and you can say, I'm this, I'm this, and you're pointing out your qualities and how good you feel and how beautiful you look, then that's okay. That's okay. Because we all need to love ourselves first because otherwise, how could we love anybody else? So don't allow someone to piss on your parade or to block your sunshine. You are, you each and every one of you are beautiful in your own way. You're certainly welcome to tout it. And anyone who says you shouldn't, Fuck them, take them to the curb. So, um, you know, that's my belief. We're all beautiful, and um, and Kim's beautiful. I want to be Kim when I grow up. Mm-hmm. I want to be Mara and Cheryl and Kara and Lisa because we are a collective of our tribe, and we're all mirrors of each other, and we're here to teach and to learn, and to just support each other. So your vibe is your tribe. So find that vibe. Find your tribe. Vote fucking blue. Um, and um and live your life the way you want because no one can tell you what to do don't break the laws that's all i mean I, like do whatever you want but just like don't break the laws i, I don't want to be bailing out anyone from jail um but i love you guys um be safe be well please do the whole mask and and, and covid stuff you, you know i keep repeating it but you know if is it true is it is it not true i know there's conflicting stuff but just keep yourself safe Okay, because if you have that, you're also keeping yourself safe, period. So I love you guys. Be safe, be well, and as always, namaste. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Kayanne. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, everybody. So great to meet everybody. You too.